turn your life on airplane mode. That's a little bit silly, isn't it? Think about it. What does that even mean? Hi, my name is Josh, or Carpo if you wish. I'm a dork, or a nerd, or a douchebag, or whatever voice or particular label you want to give me. My opinion about society and about life in general is really meaningless to the rest of you. But for the few of you who choose to listen to the nonsense that I have to say, if you want to call it nonsense, uh, I appreciate that you're here and you want to hear about why I think that we are completely full of shit and why I think we need to turn our brains onto airplane mode and what I mean by that. Um, do you ever think about the national debt? Have you ever talked about the, quote, national debt of the United States, if you live here, for example? And if so, why? Why would you give a shit? There is always some existential threat that we are given, whether it be, oh no, our nation is in debt, or, oh no, these people are going to go to war, so we better take them out first. And um, this idea of a national debt being an issue for the average American, to me, is just so preposterous. That the fact that people talk about it is quite stupid to me. I don't care about the national debt. I don't care about politics as far as how much Wall Street is losing or how much the economy is suffering. Because I know, underlying that, are people, actual individuals. And those are the people I try to look at. How is the average American faring right now? Sometimes we're doing well, and sometimes we're doing pretty shitty. And lately, we've been doing pretty shitty. And therefore, looking at things like the national debt are just a waste of time. But uh, it's not just about that. It's about looking at an enemy. It's about always finding an enemy. Americans are great at finding somebody to point the finger at. Not just Americans. I mean, this is something that goes on with every country, every culture. But I live in America, the United States of America, anyway, however you want to define it. But I don't buy into the rhetoric and bullshit about America being great and the best nation and the idea that uh, everybody should just shut their mouth and just do as they're told. I mean, I have my own perspective on life. I don't believe in just doing what you're told. I'm not one for authority. And I think a lot of people aren't. But we are moving into an age where you either accept authority or you're labeled as whatever it might be. Whether you're a terrorist or a racist, a hater. It The list goes on as the labels that are thrown on people if they don't go along with what other people believe. And my conclusion from that is that those words have become meaningless. In fact, I said that to somebody like a month ago. I was talking with a, a family member about racism, and I said, it's meaningless. And he's like, well, you know, if you say it's meaningless, it means that you, you know, aren't disagreeing with the concept that you're a racist, whatever it might be. It's this... Uh, whatever you might call it, I guess it's a a never-ending, consistent, you know, loop of bullshit that people have about how if you don't agree with the policy, you must be this. If you don't think you're this, then you are this. And because of that factor, most people have just given up on giving it shit. And it's an interesting time right now. You know, I guess... If, if I were to say anything here, it would be liberate military spending. That would be the main point of my video here. We talk about all the money that we've lost and all the money in the economy and all the things we need to fix. We talk about how much it would cost to, you know, I, I read an article, I don't know how long ago, a couple months back, that said that we could end homelessness with $30 billion dollars. Now, mind you, I realize you can't just solve homelessness with money. People need to be motivated. They need to be inspired to work and to want to do things. But $30 billion is about one twenty-fifth 
one twenty-fifth of our military budget for a year. Our priorities are not about the people. They never have been about the people. They've always been about profit. And that's why it's hard for me to trust, for example, pharmaceutical companies when they say, oh, we just want to help everybody out. Um, there's this huge existential threat out there that is killing all these people. And you need to take the medications we tell you to take because that's the only way that you're going to become a normal human and be able to integrate within our society. And you all know exactly what I mean by that. And because of that, I think it's a, be I think it's a beautiful thing. I, I am really glad that the powers that be have been pushing so hard to convince people to believe that authority knows what is best for them. Because it's taught me a lot of lessons about how ignorant people are, as well as how ignorant intelligent people are. How willing people are to believe bullshit that they hear on the internet, how willing people are to believe bullshit they hear in the media, and how willing people are to just cater to whatever their leaders tell them to do, because they don't know themselves. Because, let's be honest here, living life is complicated. Getting up in the morning, going to work, doing your normal routine, then coming home and taking the time to research the things and the topics and the ideas that you want to be able to talk about, it's not easy. Even if you're not working a full-time job. You know, as someone who works from home, I have a lot of time to research and I still don't know shit. The Dunning-Kruger effect has done a number on me. <laughs> you know, I've learned over the years that I don't know the full truth. But what I do know, is that others don't know the full truth for me either. And when it comes to what is a threat to me, I find that to be the most ridiculous thing that others put out there. In other words, when people tell me there's a virus that's going to kill everyone off, when people tell me that there's, you know, a volcano that might erupt, or an earthquake, a tsunami coming, whatever it might be, you have to assess each of those issues according to what you know, who you trust, and the things you see around you, and how it affects you personally. As well as the unknowns. With the tsunami, you hear a tsunami's coming, get to higher ground. What's it going to hurt? It only takes a few minutes. But if you're told to prepare for this crazy epidemic, and you spend two years, and in the end you don't know anybody who's really been harmed by it, you start to wonder, well, why should this be a big issue to me? And that's really my point here. Whatever's a big issue to you is a big issue to you because you choose it to be a big issue. Because ultimately, we all die. We know this. And it sounds harsh. It sounds brutal. It sounds very cold. But it's true. Because what I've found is that we need to live our lives to the best of our ability to live life. We need to go out and feel like we've really taken the day by the horns. Not just cowered and kind of did our best, but that we've really stood up to the things that we think are bullshit. And I think a lot of people are scared to speak out. A lot of people are scared to speak up. A lot of people are scared to admit how they actually feel. And if there's one thing that I don't do in my life, that's hold back from how I feel. Whether you be a friend, family member, or stranger, if you say something to me, and I don't agree with it, I'm going to tell you as much. And it's not always pretty, but it's honest. And honesty to me is probably the most important thing. Because if we're honest with ourselves, even if we're wrong, at least we have time to think about it. If I say something that I think is true and everybody else says that's complete bullshit, that will give me time to think about it. This has happened to me. People say people don't change. That's bullshit. I've watched so many videos and read so many books and listened to so many podcasts and blogs, whatever it might be, that really I've come away with the same amount of knowledge I may have had before, which is very little. Okay, everybody has their own opinion. But there are some common threads which tie us all together. And those common threads are a lot of people want honesty. It's not a matter of truth. Whether or not you believe something isn't really equivalent to whether it's true. It doesn't matter. 
if people want to fall into a religion because they believe that Scientology is going to save their life, they're going to do that. And there might be a lot of people who may be, let's say, Christian or Muslim who would be ha laughing at that idea. But you're a Christian or a Muslim. You're also buying into somebody else's idea of truth. And this comes down to liberals. This comes down to conservatives, Democrats, Republicans. You all have bought into an ideology that a bunch of other people know what's best for you and your group. And many people are willing to bend to that ideology to say, well, I might not agree 100%, but I'm going to go along with it because the rest of the people do. I think it's lazy. I think it's dishonest. And I think it is holding us back as an entire world to buy into political ideologies. Even though there is part of us that thinks left or right, that there are parts of us that may believe in, you know, freedom for all, then there's others who say, well, no, we got to sacrifice some of this freedom. These ideas go back and forth. It's not that Republican left or right has a certain value that has held up through a thousand years. These things change every decade. So what we've got to do is look deep within ourselves and say, what do we really want as individuals? What do we want from the world? And what do we want from each other? But most of all, what do we want from our own lives? What do we want from ourselves? Are we going to let other people's ideas dictate how we feel and think? That brings me full circle to existential threats and the national debt. Who gives a shit? I don't care what my nation owes any more than I care about reparations, any more than I care about... Uh, and I don't mean that offensively, but rather we we are constantly buying into this idea that everybody needs to be healed and everybody needs to be happy and taken care of. The world we live in does not reflect that at all. The world that I've seen in my days here, 46 years old, I don't buy into it. I don't buy into the bullshit. I don't buy into the idea that I need to just kind of bite my tongue and hold back. Because if I did, I wouldn't be honest with myself. A lot of people out there cater to the lowest common denominator. And by that I mean a lot of YouTubers, vloggers, bloggers, Twitter users, whatever it might be, they just want to say whatever's going to enrage people for this side or that side. And I find that lazy. Because eventually that issue that those people are talking about, it goes away. And then they're left trying to find something else to enrage people with. And I'm not here for that. I'm here to talk about the things that I think are important. And that's why... I feel after 10 years, still making YouTube videos without doing any editing of my thoughts, um, I can be proud of that and say, this is how I feel. And if you don't, then cool. Whatever. <laughs> I'm way past giving a shit whatever the other people think. Um, and I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way. If you have an opinion, I'm willing to listen. But as far as what other people think about me or my thoughts or my life, don't even bother. These are my thoughts, and uh, I'll keep them in my heart for what it's worth. But uh, there's my ramble. National debt doesn't matter. You take that money away from the military, you put it into, you know, helping the infrastructure, fixing our country. It's just not going to happen. Because I don't take politicians seriously. I don't care if you wear a dress with some, you know, tax the rich spray painted on the back of it. I don't care if you go out there and you stand in front of a podium and say you're going to help the working class Americans. They're all full of shit. Politicians are full of shit. And most people are out for themselves. So I trust the poor people a hell of a lot more than I trust the rich. I guess going to dead shows and, and meeting people, there's some shit bags out there, but most people mean well. Most people just want connections. And ultimately, if you want to have any riches in this life, uh, make it relationships, friends, family, and do the best you can, because that's all we can do. Peace out.